So what I think I'll do is just quickly check this power supplies. I know where the rails are, so oh, it was on. <laughs> and let's see what we get. So let's shove one probe in there, which is the common zero volt. This should be 15. Yeah, this should be 15. Oh, we got a missing power supply rail. And let's check the 20 or the 5 volt rail over here. Let's be sure it's okay. The ground, I think, was that one. Rightly. I think that's the 5 volt there. Yep, 5.1, that's fine. So, yeah, we've got a missing rail. This one here. Minus 9 volts, or 0.9 volts. And that's minus 15. So it should be plus 15 volt rail, and it's missing. Right, let's try and trace this back. So we know we've got no 15 volt rail here, and the power supply is right here. So it's easy to check. The test points are right there as well. Regulators are right there, so we can trace back to that. I'll check the regulator test points right there first. See if there's anything there in case there's a connection problem between here and here. Um, in case it's chasing someone that doesn't need to. If there's no power here, I'll go back a bit further. I'll go before the regulator, check that there's a supply feeding the regulator, which is those two big caps I'll just replace down here with the plus or minus 15 volt rails. These are the main DC smoothing caps that come in about, be about over 20 volts coming in anyway. I think it's about 25 volts or something like that comes in. Um, between 20 and 25, I think, something like that comes in anyway. There's no power here, we'll trek back, go to here, see if there's anything there instead. Let's power it up. So the test points are right here, I think the middle one's the common. Got these traces right here, actually it's quite good. There's that minus 0.9, minus 15. So yet the regulator right there is bad. Okay, so there's no supply from here. Let's check the caps. 25 volts on that one. 23 volts on that one. So the supply coming in to the regulator is there. So it must be a bad regulator. Well, that's annoying. That's a bit of a pain to get to. Right, I've done a little search online. The part for this is a UA78NG1C, which is an adjustable voltage regulator. It's got four legs on the device. So it's input, output, adjustment, and a common. So it's fully variable, so I need to get the same part. I and mean, I could get a 7815, but I have to make sure I'm tuning it to be exactly the right voltage, and that's the problem. These are rated at one amp, so that part of it's not a problem. But I think I need to try and get at least an equivalent part. I should be able to get something. It should be a fairly easy thing to get. Obviously, I'll need to figure out how. All right, for the sake of completeness, all I'll do is I'll measure directly on the regulator itself. I'm just about to get to it. So it's just here. The legs are right there. So I can just get in there. Um, hopefully, without shorting anything out or touching anything I shouldn't touch. So I should be able to get into the common there and touch on his other legs and um, we'll see what we're getting there. It's a bit shady doing that, but anyway, it's already blown, I think. But I need to prove it's blown in case I'm chasing something that's not a problem. Alright, so first things first, I need to get onto a common, which is there. And also I mustn't slip. So adjust pin first, nothing. I'll put minus 0.9 and put 25. So, yep, big low 74. So, out of curiosity, I just unplugged the analog board, right? This is the power supply to that. In fact, I might unplug the digital one as well. Let's just look at this. I'm getting 6 volts instead of minus 9 or minus 0.9. So, maybe the regular is partially working. So what I think happened is because this was off by one pin, I think it shorted out the regulator. And that's what's blown it. That's my suspicion. Um, it could also be the ball at the back here, which is marked as bad. Maybe that was shorting out because that was getting this one hot. That's the minus 15 volt. Maybe it would have blown plus 15 volt. Maybe that's weakened it. It's not actually getting hot, so I don't think it's being overloaded. I think it's failed. Okay, so we established that the 15 volt rail has got an issue. So it's just... Um, do some other checking on this. So obviously there's no power there. There's power going into the regulator, nothing coming out unless I disconnect all the balls and I get a six volt rail, not a 15 volt rail. So it could just be the regulator is partially working. Maybe it's reference internal is working and some other stuff is half going, but the actual main output from the regulator is blown. So it could be it's being loaded down, although there's no heat on this heatsink here. We've got a heatsink for the minus 15 volt, which is slightly warm and heatsink for the plus 15 volt is cold. So I believe that it's not actually being overloaded. I'm pretty sure it's not shorted out, but I just want to be sure that that's not the case. 
So let's just um, probe in here. Let's probe across test points, which are here. I'm going in diode mode on a meter. That's the charging capacity, that's fine. Reverse polarity. Always reverse polarity. And that's also charging, that's fine. So no actual short. Um, if I do for comparisons on the minus 15 volt rail, it should be really similar. You see, it's exactly the same behavior. So that's fine. That just confirms that, doesn't it? Both polarities, exactly the same. So there's no short on 15 volt rail. And that's a good thing. I think this board here, which was causing the minus 15 volt to get very hot, I think this is probably what's wrong. That's probably blown that regulator because it does. I've done a little look at that already, and that's. Um, this is across the minus and plus 15 volt rails. So it could be this failure on here has blown that regulator. It's quite likely. So, what we can do from here, if we just assume that regulator is dead, I can substitute my own regulator supply. If I, if I inject my own 15 volt rail, we could see if that changes anything, see if we get any more life out of it. Okay, so I've got some uh, probes hooked up on here. These are connected to my power supply, so that's on the TP6 and TP7. So TP6 is the plus 15, TP7 is 0 volt rail. So I've got those hooked up there. I've already verified my power supply, it's got the correct voltage on it, and it's not turned on. <laughs> Alright, so I've already got ready for that. We shall power it all up, and we'll see what happens. So if you watch the splash, I might just pop this up so you can try and see it a little bit better. Might be a better way of doing it, eh? See it a little bit better, hopefully. Let's. Uh, Give it a go. Turn the supply on, and I think I hit both at the same time. So it simulates a normal power up. Let's try that, shall we? Okay, it might have been the delay on that supply, maybe. Because it did flick OL for a second. Hold on. Let's do it that way. Here we go, straight in. Right. It's doing something, it's working. How's that? Voltage is working. Oh, look at that. Okay, so we've got something. That's looking kind of right, actually. So let's do a test, see if it brings up any errors. Error 6. Okay. Which is... kind of... Era 5 is gone, that's something. Era 6, Era 7, and past calibration we know about anyway. Okay, so one of the faults is, is gone, which I think, uh, Era 5 I think was the DC board. Era 6, I think 6 is ohms, 7 is AC. I think that's the way it works. So we've still got some problems, but it's at least doing that. Let's hook up a power supply and, well, my little voltage calibrator thing from my PDVST Mini from Ian Johnston. Um, I've done a review on that if you haven't seen it. We'll just test the voltage, see if it's actually reading anything. Right, here we go. Let's turn it on. As you can see, I've got it hooked up. Let's get the cable out of the way so you can see. Right. Let's see if it's reading anything. Right, one volt. It's doing a volt. It's reading something. Let's change the one volt scale. Yep, that's looking good. Okay. Um, actually go back to the thousand again and we'll turn on the extra digit that's working two volts yep three four five yep okay let's go up to ten ten volts slightly off there uh, yeah. okay that's fine I'll put out to 20 calibrations I trust this more than I trust this certainly um, who knows, this is, I think this has had board swaps and stuff, so it's probably out of spec because of that happening, but it's kind of right, you know, it's in the ballpark, so let's go to 100 volt scale, yep, 10 volt, 10 volt scale, which it probably, yep, okay, I'll go down to 100 millivolts, okay, yep, Yep, even all the ranges are working. So that's good. So DC volts is working. It's out of calibration, but it's working. So that's a great step. Um, go back to zero. Is it zeroing out properly? No, it's not. It's a negative number. So if I do an input zero on that, 
and then turn it back on to 100 millivolts. It's closer. Um, and if I do this, oh, no, turn it off now. Um, I think auto and auto zero, I think it does them all. It does, it goes through each one and zeroes it. Let's do that. I read that in the manual the other day. Now I'll turn it back on again. We'll see if we get a more accurate reading. So that's one volt, 0.995. Nine nine four, nine nine one. Go up to ten volts. I've got nine nine four. So it's consistent at least. Well, within reason. Each range is individually calibrated. Okay, so we've got DC volts working. Yay! So all we'll do is fix that power supply, and that will at least get that part working. So let's see if anything else is actually working. Even though we've got those errors, it might just be it's out of calibration so much that, that um, it fails. The self test because it has to be within a certain percentage, I think it has to be within like 1.5% or something in order to pass. So, um, let me get my resistance box and I'll plug the resistance in and we'll see if the resistance range works. Okay, my resistance box is here in shot. I'm only going to do two wires, so I'm actually on two wire mode. And oh, you see, I'm just going up here. I don't think it matters that much. I think in two wires, it link them together, I think it does actually. Okay, kilo ohms. I'm currently set at zero. And we'll do auto ranging. Okay, this looks promising. Let's step through. Let's do one ohm. Hey, it's reading. Okay, 10 ohms. Yep. 100 ohms. Yep. 1k. Yep, 10k. Yep, 100k. Yep, so it is actually working. It's got to 900k. Yep, that's there too. So let's do 10 meg. Yep, that's there. Okay. And let's go back down to 10 ohms. Oops, click lead just fell off. And it's back on. Okay, so where was I? 10 ohms? Yeah, 10 ohms range. I should be at 1 ohm there. Yeah. Resistance is also working. It's just probably giving an error because of the calibration values being so far out. Because I think it's been ball swapped. So I'm pretty sure that's why it's wrong by so much. Normally it's much better than this, I believe. AC. What can I test AC with? Hmm. Okay, I've got my signal oscilloscope set up with the wave generator turned on and it's outputting 4 millivolts right now. I've got it hooked up to this obviously. Uh, what I range it? And we're just getting this. I'm doing 50 hertz right now at 4 millivolts which is not much at all and it's seeing something I think. So we'll wind this up but let's go 11 millivolts. Here we go, it's seeing something. 31, no that's not great, let's go up to 100, I'll get there, hold on, it's 100 millivolts peak to peak, 36, so it is registering something, but it doesn't look right, ok let's keep going, it could just be calibration, ok so we're now approaching 1 volt, went over shot a little bit there, 1 volt peak to peak, getting 358, so it is actually reading something, but it seems to be quite wrong. This is obviously reading RMS, so it should be 0.7 volts. It should be 0.707, you think about the VPP versus RMS values. So it's not quite right there. If I change the frequency to go higher, see that change in there. I'll aim for 1 kilohertz. And 1 kilohertz there. Still the same. Okay, so frequency isn't really what's affecting it. It just seems to be a long way out. Just one voltage up some more. 2.2 volts, yeah. Uh, 5 volts there. 1.7. There's 6 volts, which is as high as my signal can go. And that's change ranges. So it is reading something, it's just a long way out. 
either it's got a problem or it's just a very long way of calibration. Obviously I need to do my AC calibrator on here to actually test that properly and to be sure I'll get in the right levels but uh, it's not right. If I change to 50 ohm loading, it's just 3 volts output peak to peak. Maybe I should look at the loading side of it. Am I interpreting this incorrectly? So 1 volt there. Oh, maybe it's alright. Hmm. Okay, so I've got my oscilloscope now set at 50 ohm loading on the output, assumed for the voltages and stuff, and that's now 1 volt peak to peak, which is 0.715, which is close. So, yeah, I think I need to get some on my calibrator to be sure with, but it seems to be reading something, so it's, I think it's just out of calibration now. So I think what I really do now is fix up power supply.